I think this is enough cans, guys. What's up y'all? Welcome back to another Fridays with the fam. Mila knocked out like five minutes before <laughs> we decided to get in front of the camera. So and right Mila now, out. right now it's, it's uh, 747 p.m. Central Standard Time here in Houston. You know the city, our city, our hometown that got affected by all the flooding, by all the aftermath of you know the Hurricane Harvey. It landed in Rockport and all the heavy bands pretty much just poured out with no mercy on Houston and it's only been the last two three days that we've actually been able to kind of get out the house it's, we've just been surrounded so yeah uh, definitely uh, keep keep your prayers thoughts and uh, your condolences for mm -hmm. condolences condolences for condolences the, for, for the everyone Houstonians. affected and those that yeah. lost their lives here in the city so it's yeah. it's been very uh, hard time for the city as a whole and even for us even though even the ones that didn't necessarily get directly affected in, in terms of flooding or tornadoes you know we can't get out the house everything's flooded everything's either closed or they're understaffed so there's no one or they're in shelters so it's been crazy also a big issue with people that are in their homes and not in shelters are the grocery stores are having a hard time restocking because our port is closed and there's not um, a lot of ways you can get into the city because our mm -hmm. major highway, I-10, was very Pretty badly flooded yeah, and affected. Not a lot of sections of it. Also, they're saying, you know, since, you know, here in Houston, the Port of Houston is, is the largest petrochemical complex in the world. Uh, and obviously, there are a lot of our gas import and processing goes in through there so you know a lot of people are saying that there is a you know a shortage of there's, there's going to be and supposedly there isn't according to experts whatever that means but uh yeah there, there's gonna be a fuel shortage i'm sure of that uh, right now i mean the uh, yesterday they came, an official came on the air and said there is no gas shortage but that didn't stop people on social media from going like in into other cities like San Antonio, Dallas, Austin. From, from going into a panic yeah. and causing a gas shortage that way because um, it, you can't refuel a gas station, you know, immediately. You know, those trucks have to come in. In case you don't know, a gas station actually, actually gets refilled between two to three times a week. So imagine that, you know, a lot of gas stations haven't been able to get that resupply, you know, so... Who knows? It may or may not be true. They just it may depend by you know the town you're in or city you're in. So there's that. So it's been definitely a hard time here. Uh, so we've been stuck home, but that's fine. I've just today, been able to get as much done as possible. Yeah. Today I actually Jeff stayed home, but I went and I helped in the both shelters today. Actually, <clears throat> in the morning around eight, we went to um, the NRG center and then. Around two, we went to um, the George R. Brown, and um, they're vastly different shelters. Um, there's a lot of people in George R. Brown, I think, because it was the first one that opened, and NRG was the overflow shelter. And it was only supposed to hold like 5,000 people, but it ended up holding like a little over 10,000 people. I don't know about the current status, but it was there. at 10,000 people two days ago. Currently, it is at a, a little bit over 8,000 people. There are about 3,000 people at NRG. Um, but during the day, you don't see all of those people because, um, you know, some of the people that had been volunteering and that work at the shelters were telling us that a lot of people go home during the day to clean up and then they return at night, like after five or when the sun goes down, mm -hmm. so they can sleep there because they still don't have a place to sleep. But yeah, we're really glad we did everything to prepare and everything to be able to, you know, just prepare if we we're going to be stuck here at home for a couple of days, which we did. So that's great. And yeah. for me, we, like, we you know, started, she has no idea what's going on. It's yeah. just rain to her. You know, she thinks it's just rain and wind. So uh, um, for she know us, uh, I was hearing on the news that there was a storm to watch in the Gulf. And I don't take those, you know, threats lightly. lightly. I, we're still in the middle of hurricane season. It's at the end of November or beginning of November 1st or Me or like and that. Jeff, I don't know if you were following us on Instagram stories, but on Monday... I kind of went a little off. <laughs> on Monday of last week, 
um, we had bought four cases of water in. No, four. we bought five, and then oh, five cases of water. We in ended like, up having like seven or eight, and we just had a lot of canned food, everything. So we prepared very well. Yeah, we early on. Our batteries, portable chargers, gas. everything charged, gas. We had gallons of gas, which was hectic, you know. So basically, you know, we, because the storm grew so fast, everyone only had like basically a, a day or and a couple also, of hours after getting off of work to prepare. Yeah. Also, so. people like people that actually physically work at like normal nine to five jobs, they yeah. didn't let them go till Friday at noon to go and prepare for these sto this storm. And people had to go pick up their kids if they have kids, go prepare and everything. And if, they're gonna, if they were gonna evacuate, they had to do all of that and evacuate if they had the chance or they had the means to do so. A lot of people didn't because they can't. And a lot of people didn't because a lot of people have just been able to survive and made it through all the previous storms. So, But this one was, mm -hmm. you know, much worse. On, My you know, mom was telling me at the grocery store, since there was two kinds of people that you saw. You saw people that were there because they know they needed to get supplies, but they really didn't know what they needed to buy. And then you had other people that were panicking and they were just grabbing everything. But our neighborhood, thank God, that none of the water, you know, flooded the streets because we have yeah, so yeah, many. Yeah, we're, we're getting worked. It was getting close, mm -hmm. but thankfully, you know, you know, our daughter is safe and the rest of our family was able to stay, you know, in the comfort of our home, you know, without having to worry much. So yeah, that's that's what matters to us and taking care of our daughter, babies, and everyone else. So. That's good. So that's what's been going on with our family here. So I know we talked a lot about the hurricane because it, is, it was very devastating, it, yeah. very catastrophic for our city. You know, I was born and raised here. Ashley's lived here pretty much all ne nearly her entire life, so mm -hmm. at least half of it, or if you want to get technical. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, at least 15 years I've been here. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, definitely. Hopefully, you know, Mila missed out again on this uh, on Fridays with the fam again. But uh, we're gonna be able to bring her <laughs> back on. When hopefully, she's gonna knock out. She always knocks out yeah. at like the wrong times. But I mean, she's and has either to that. Up. I think last time that we start, we tried to do this video. I was sick, and Mila really wasn't in a good mood. So, and she gets like that mainly because she's so frustrated that she wants to be out of her cast already. And it was we had oh that's one thing I did want to point out today actually yesterday was supposed to be the day uh, where well, we had to gets, go to the doctor yeah. to get her cast off, but you know due to the you know uh, all the flooding and everything we had to reschedule so it's gonna be until another week week and a half so yeah. they want to throw that out to you guys so we'll see yeah but I think we're gonna wrap it up yeah also if you notice that Jeff tries to talk over me sometimes and he kind of man my thoughts come randomly so he he mansplains certain things to us and. Uh, to me and yeah. to you guys like as we're recording this and I've become so aware of it like that I'm trying to say something and Jeff will like take over and talk over me and that's called mansplaining it's when a man feels the need to explain things even though you're trying to explain it or sometimes I, I have very selective hearing so you see I, he's I, doing it right now so I just I'm like, oh I like well, I'm just like, I doze off from daydreaming, and I'm like, oh, I forgot this, but she already mentioned it, you know, so she thinks it's mansplaining, but I He's just He's currently didn't mansplaining, hear mansplaining. Yes. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> We're going to wrap this up. Um, Yeah, so we hope you guys have a wonderful weekend, and thank you guys for joining us this Friday. All right, guys, we'll catch you next Friday. Peace out. Mila just woke up. Like literally right after we finish recording. Mila, you missed it.